a really important concept in uh, the immune system is uh, communication. Uh, one of the things that's really important is the all of the parts of the immune system communicate with each other and coordinate with each other. And that is a big part of what makes the immune system so powerful. When the immune system doesn't communicate properly, it doesn't function properly, and um, in, in some cases it can just become less effective, and in some cases it can actually begin to hurt you. Uh, so when we talk about communication, and we're talking about cells, you have to remember that cells don't exactly have, you know, they don't have hearing, and they don't have sight, and they don't have speech. So how do cells communicate? And uh, basically, the one thing, the one sense that cells do have is kind of smell, right? So what, what your sense of smell is, is like chemicals in the air bind to receptors in your nose. And different chemicals produce different responses, and more of those chemicals produce stronger responses. And chemical communication is the way that cells talk to one another. And if you've had any anatomy and physiology, you might be familiar with the concept of hormonal signaling. And this is very similar. Uh, it's not technically endocrine because mostly it happens over short distances. This is, is what's called a paracrine signaling for the most part. But um, cells send out information uh, by secreting chemicals. They release chemicals into the fluid surrounding them and then those chemicals diffuse and are carried away. And they, depending upon what chemical is secreted, carries different messages. This is sort of like the equivalent of uh, the cell's voice. It is a signal that goes away from the cell and can be received by other cells. These voices, these chemical signals, are called cytokines. Cyto, meaning cell, and kine uh, from kine, which means uh, like kind of motion, but not necessarily motion in the literal sense. It means to be moved to action. Uh, it, action is probably uh, a, a better term for it. So it means this is cell action. These are going to be chemicals that promote specific actions in other cells. And um, lots of cells and parts of the immune system secrete different cytokines, each of which sends different signals. And unlike with voices and hearing, where like you can hear pretty much any sound, this is much more specific. So in order to hear a particular chemical signal, you have to have the proper receptor for it. It's like if each sound had its own ears that you needed to have to hear it. Uh, and these are surface receptors, right? So if you think of, uh, of cytokines as the voices of cells, surface receptors are the eyes and ears. This is how they receive information, but everything has to be matched up. So, for instance, histamine is a cytokine that can be produced. Um, and if you have a cell that produces histamine, it goes out, spreads out away from the cell, um, and only the cells that have histamine receptors will respond to it. Some cells have histamine receptors, and some cells don't. And depending upon the type of cell, they're going to have a different reaction depending upon uh, you know, their specific cell type. So like some cells might respond to histamine by changing shape, 
whereas other cells might respond to histamine by moving in a particular direction. And so, like, you can have lots of different cytokines, and they can produce different actions in different cell types. Uh, and you can start to see how uh, this can get very complicated. Now, there are a bunch of different cytokines. Uh, and while I don't necessarily need you guys to know them all, I do want you to know some of the big categories of them and uh, some of the particularly important ones. First is chemokines. So remember when I said kine means movement? Well, in this case, the movement is literal. Chemokines are chemicals, chemical signals that cause cells to move physically. Uh, specifically, they cause cells to move towards the source of the chemicals, towards the place where the chemicals are most concentrated. Uh, these are uh, sometimes called um, chemoattractants because they're chemicals that attract particular cells to them, and they are said to induce chemotaxis. Right? So, taxis, taxi means more literally movement. See, like back in the olden days before we had Uber, like there were these things called taxis. And, um, you know, there were like cars that would take you to particular places. And so like chemotaxis is like, think of it as it's a chemical taxi for cells, right? Uh, causes particular cells to move to that area. So colony stimulating factor is so named because uh, this is a chemical that when we gave it to cells would cause them to grow into colonies. Um, and in your body, what it basically does is it stimulates cells to divide and make more cells. Uh, specifically, it's going to cause your leukocytes, white blood cells, to divide and differentiate. So this controls like how many and what type of red blood cells you're making. This is particularly important in an immune response because remember that your white blood cells don't have a whole lot of sense of self-preservation. Like they're going out there and if like, if it takes them dying to kill some bacteria, they're gonna do that. Like your white blood cells die in droves. So you gotta be replenishing your army a lot. So when you're sick uh, or having some sort of immune response, you produce a lot of colony stimulating factor, and depending upon what type you make, you make different white blood cells. Like, you're always going to probably want to make neutrophils, because they die real fast and you need a lot of them, but you're also going to make colony stimulating factors that, um, that uh, tell the right B cells and T cells to, uh, to, to replicate and differentiate into stuff called plasma cells, which then make antibodies. Interferons are a type of uh, cytokine that is specifically antiviral in nature. Um, interferons are basically like a warning sign. When a cell detects that it has been infected with a virus, like while it still has a little bit of control over itself, it knows it's going to go like under the control of the virus soon, but it isn't quite yet, it will start producing interferon. And what interferon does is it says to all of the surrounding cells, hey, I have been infected. Very soon, I will start producing viruses. 
you should prepare to defend yourself. And so the cells around it will uh, do a number of things. They will activate all of their antiviral defense systems, and they will also stop making new proteins, right? Because a virus's whole purpose in life is to trick the cell into making viral proteins instead of proper cell proteins. And like, your cells are not necessarily smart enough to tell the difference. If they were, viruses wouldn't be very effective. And what they can do is just go, no, I ain't making no proteins whatsoever. If I'm infected, awesome, not making your virus proteins. If I'm not infected, well, I'm not making my own proteins, but I can survive a while doing that. Um, and it doesn't like stop a viral infection exactly, but it slows it down dramatically. So these interferons are, uh, you know, super important for controlling viral infections. In fact, uh, interferon therapy is a thing. When somebody has a chronic viral infection, we, we sometimes give drugs that mimic interferons uh, to them to help them fight off the virus. Uh, I'm going to skip over interleukins for a second. Tumor necrosis factor. Um, these are so named because if you take tumor cells and you put this chemical on them, the tumor cells kill themselves. Um, and in fact, actually, tumor necrosis factor will induce apoptosis or cell suicide in many different types of cells that you put it on. Um, this is, uh, in the last video, I, I talked about how one of the things that T cells, the natural killer cells, do is when they find a cell that's been virally infected or is starting to become cancerous, they tell it to kill itself. Well, one of the ways they do that is by secreting tumor necrosis factor. Um, and this, like, is the chemical signal that punches the suicide button. Uh, and, like, remember I said different cytokines produce, like, or a single cytokine might produce different responses in different cell types. In addition to uh, promoting apoptosis in tumorous cells, um, Tumor necrosis factor is also very important in regulating the response of a lot of other cells. Uh, last one that I want to talk about here are interleukins, uh, which are um, a broad category of things. Um, without getting into too much detail, these are involved in control and regulation. Uh, there are a whole bunch of different interleukins and they each do something different, but the sort of broad outline of what they're most involved in is controlling and coordinating the immune system so that the right hand knows what the left hand is doing so that everything kind of responds in a coordinated fashion. Um, you can see just some examples down here. Like uh, a lot of them are involved in, um, in lymphocyte regulation, you know, activating T cells. Uh, some of them induce fever. Uh, some of them promote antibodies. They have a bunch of different effects, but they, they, they all involve some sort of like controlling how the immune system works and coordinates with each other. Uh, there are a number of other chemical signal signals as well. Um, some of these are technically cytokines. Some aren't technically cytokines. Some, it really kind of doesn't matter. But uh, these are chemical signals that, that mostly uh, help to regulate inflammation, which is the main part of the innate immune response. 
And I want you to know these group of chemicals as well. Um, the first is what's called C-reactive protein, or CRP. Uh, this is something that you're actually going to probably see a lot throughout your medical career. It, uh, a CRP test is one of the most frequently done blood tests out there because CRP is one of the first proteins made in response to inflammation, and it's considered a biomarker of inflammation, All right? So um, if you take somebody's blood and their CRP is high, it means that they have some sort of inflammatory disorder. Uh, you know, something uh, that's going on with them is, uh, is inflammatory in nature. Um, whereas if they have low or normal CRP, then, you know, whatever's going on with them probably doesn't involve inflammation. Um, serum amyloid A uh, is basically similar. Different... Different proteins, same effects. Um, in terms of what they do, uh, so they promote phagocytosis. Uh, so these are some of the things that are going to activate and attract um, neutrophils and other phagocytes. Uh, they are also opsonins, which means that they stick to bad guys, mostly bacteria, but it could be, um, you know, like fungi or virally infected cells or cancerous cells. Uh, they stick to whatever it is that you want to destroy and they mark it for destruction. They're like targets for your immune system. Uh, second, mannose binding lecto, lectin. A lectin is a protein that binds to sugars. In this case, it's binding to the sugar mannose, which is found frequently in um, bacteria. Uh, specifically, I believe that it's found a lot in bacterial capsules and uh, the outer membranes of gram-negative bacteria. And this signals the complement system to activate. Um, I'm gonna have a whole video over the complement system. So like for now, suffice it to say that the complement system is one of your attack responses uh, that is um, part of the innate immune system. Leukotrienes. So um, leukotrienes are long-term stimulators of inflammation. Histamine is a short-term stimulator. It's very fast. When you produce histamine, inflammation happens very, very quickly and very strongly. Uh, but leukotrienes are like more about staying power. They aren't as fast, they aren't produced as fast, but uh, they are very strong stimulators of inflammation. And uh, they tend to last a long time and they specifically produce or activate those parts of inflammation that have to do with getting, with expelling a pathogen, right? So they induce things that are going to expel pathogens from your portals. So coughing, which is going to help expel things from your lungs, vomiting, which will expel things from your stomach, diarrhea, which expels things out the other end. Um, so all of that is stimulated by leukotrienes. Um, prostaglandins. Prostaglandins are hormones that have a huge number of different effects, uh, but if we're talking about within the immune system, um, these are uh, inflammatory promoters and specifically, they stimulate fever, and so would be called pyrogens. 
anything that stimulates fever is called a pyrogen. Uh, bradykinin is one that I want you to pay particular import, uh, attention to um, because there is a theory that this is very important in COVID and how COVID causes disease. So um, bradykinin uh, specifically is going to stimulate the edema part of inflammation, um, which is the swelling. Uh, the release of fluids from the blood into the tissues. Um, cytokines and bradykinin are all very, very important and potent. A lot of, uh, particularly with viral diseases, a lot of what kills you is what's called a cytokine storm, which is when um, your immune system like reacts, overreacts to a, uh, a virus and produces such a strong inflammation response that the inflammation itself begins to tear your body apart. Uh, specifically, there's also what's called a bradykinin storm, which some theories uh, indicate might be involved in COVID and a bradykinin storm, you produce lots of bradykinin, and what that does is that it causes all of your body to undergo edema. Um, so you your lungs become leaky and inflamed and fill up with fluid. And if your lungs fill up with fluid, guess what? That's pneumonia. You now can't breathe with them. Uh, similar things happen to your liver and your kidneys, uh, and they don't function very well when they're swollen like that. And so, um, you know, if your kidneys are swollen, then, uh, uh, then you, you're in rhinitis, uh, and that can lead to kidney failure. If your, your liver becomes swollen enough, that can lead to liver failure. Um, so this sort of like body-wide or system-wide swelling, um, caused by an over-release of bradykinin, a bradykinin storm, uh, lowers your blood pressure, potentially causes you to go into shock, reduces your ability to get oxygen, um, and everything like that. So why bother having bradykinin at all? It isn't like this is something the virus makes. This is something your body makes in response to the virus. And that's because inflammation is a really, really important part of how you defend yourself. Uh, and the swelling specifically is a part of how you channel nutrients and white blood cells into the area of an infection. But it's a tool that is very powerful and which can be used against you. So, um, in conclusion, uh, I want you guys to know the, uh, the cytokine categories on the last page, and I want you to know these specific inflammation mediators.